Hey, I'm Shan, Mama of the Girls. This is Cozy Moon Podcast. I discuss everything parenting and kid affiliated. This is season 17, and I appreciate you listening. Parenting isn't about being perfect. It's about being better so our kids have more opportunities. Hey, I'm kid number one, Anya. Welcome back to season 17 of my mom's podcast. Hey guys, it's Kid 2 Ari. Welcome to Cozy Room Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to Cozy Room Podcast. This is episode 5, How Much is Enough? My name is Shan, I am the mom of the girls. Hey, hey, hey. Now, costs be kicking everyone's backside, okay? Had to give you a throwback word, the backside. But what's the actual cost of having a kid? What's the actual cost of getting kids clothes? What's the actual cost of feeding these kids? What's the cost of making time to spend with your kids? That's what I'm talking about this episode. Good awakening. Let's get into it. Yay! Let's get into some parenting news. As a gun owner, put your weapons up, okay? These headlines of kids getting into uh, adults' guns and getting access to it while they're in the home, while they're in the store and leaving a child in the car, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. To be a gun owner and have children or have children around requires a lot of responsibility and preparation. And preparation for me is having a gun case. And preparation for me is being aware of where my kids are and where I am. And preparation for me to have other people's children around me as a gun owner is to make sure it is put away. Okay? That is our responsibility as parents. There is nothing wrong with having guns and having children. What's wrong is there is a lack and a slack where there shouldn't be with gun owners with children. Okay? Kids need to know how to behave in your absence. I am tired of parents walking into stores and allowing their child to do whatever, to whatever um, merchandise or jump on things or throw things at a restaurant. If your child acts like that, please take your food to go. Please order online. It's not fair for everyone else to have to deal with what you don't wanna deal with when it comes to your children. Especially if someone would get up and handle your child a certain way, you would be offended. Keep your child at home, okay? Or get your child together with the proper discipline and talking to. Ari um, was at school, and I already warned her teacher that Ari um, has a sense of entitlement because the way she's treated at my house versus her dad's house is completely different so she gets um the illusion of the fact that the world revolves around her everywhere that she goes so i already gave her teacher the warning before she started school so they had snack time and ari acted a whole fool because the only snack that her teacher had for her was um, some snickers sis sistren She threw a tantrum. She was kicking and screaming on the floor. The teacher had to take her outside. Anya's uh, kindergarten teacher came outside and was like, what's the problem? And it was all because Ari did not like the snack. So I had to talk to her teacher. I was on Class Dojo, which is a great app. I called her teacher. Her dad got called. Um, Because I put his number down as a work number. Because, sir, if I'm going to be talk to about Ari's behavior you're going to be talked to about Ari's behavior too it's not one-sided just because she goes to school in my um county and not yours so um yes I made her write um a sorry letter and put it in her folder so she could give it to her teacher so she had a boring day Friday and she had a boring day on Saturday until her dad got her because homie don't play that, okay? You can't go to school acting your way over snack time, which the teacher does not have to give you anything, okay? Teachers deserve to have a heads up on your children before they step into that classroom because it is unfair for your child to think they need to be treated a different way outside of the other 18 kids that's in that class. Kindergartners at that. 
okay? And usually teachers have themselves in a assistant teacher. Some teachers don't. So get your child together. And that's all I have for parenting news. Let's get into this show. All right, y'all. So there was this article that came out um, basically overshadowing the average cost of raising a child from infancy to 17 plus, right? And it was over $300,000, okay? And a lot of people were like, oh my gosh. But we know as parents, as grandparents, as foster parents, as step parents, as my uncle, as, you know, the auntie that's taking care of, you know, your your family's child. Kid, the, the cost of kids is more so due to repetition. You have to keep buying the diapers. You have to keep buying the food. You have to keep buying the clothes. You have to keep buying the shoes. You got to keep buying the um, medicine. You got to keep taking them here. They getting into stuff. They break stuff. Da, 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 da. So that the cost does get up there. No matter if it's schooling, food, medical, diapers, safety, clothes, the fluctuation changes depending on where you live. The average cost of raising a baby from 17 years, uh, I mean from a baby to 17 years is around $233,610 in the United States, okay? If you don't live in the United States, it might be cheaper because every other country just so happens to be able to give their people free health care. The United States just can't come to grips with it. Hmm. But yeah. Love for your children is also an affection, but is also in providing. Okay? Love for affection does not cost you. But put loving and providing in the same mix, it does require you to you know, balance out your time with work and providing and being there. And the price keeps going up, okay? When you want kids, make sure caring for them is practical for your life. And when I say caring for them, I'm speaking on providing for them. There is a care that's needed for kids to become great human beings. And people have to make sure they are mentally fit. It's not all financial. And I'll tell you more after these messages. Hey guys, hey there. Are you a creator? Are you a podcaster? Are you looking to start your own podcast? Cool, I love it, I like it, go do it. But to get you started on the right track, please check out the podcast journal to organize and get your flow right or how to market your podcast with Marketing The Podcast 101. That's another book that you should grab. And if you want to store all your podcast questions that make it just your signature touch to your show, your signature touch, okay? Make it yours with the podcast questions. It's a journal for podcasters, for creators who want to get organized and really put that spice on your brand on lulu.com all those journals created by me i'll put it in the show notes thank you so much for checking out cozy womb podcast don't forget to check out the cozy womb shop for all your merch and mama's cozy closet with teespring now back to the show here we go back to the show back to the show My podcast spotlight today is The Real Monsters by Eric Aaron. Great podcaster. If you could imagine um, listening to a movie, that is the epitome of what his podcasts are and his delivery and production. Great podcast. If you like um, crime podcasts or just imagining listening to like the first 48, but acting out some scenes of it it's a great podcast to listen to real um situations that have happened over a period of time please check it out it's called the real monsters by eric aaron 
there is a consistency that is required for parents to do and uh, show up in when you're raising children and raising children in a healthy way. And that has to be kept up. We have to be better than our parents. We have to be better about what we had as kids. Beyond the cuteness or the baby stage, can you afford food for two, three, four people until 18 plus years? Is your home big enough? Do you have equal time to share? Does dad spend equal time with the kids? Does mom spend equal time with the kids? Do the siblings get along? Are you there to discipline them? Are you there to teach them? Are you there to guide them? Are you there to love on them? Spend quality time with them, okay? Can you keep all of your kids safe? Do you live in a safe environment? Are you making enough money to move out of the environment that's not so safe? Kids need so much and it's important for people to be prepared Um, Not just financially, but mentally, emotionally. You got to be able to check yourself when you have children because there's no one around to really check you and be like, no, you're doing it wrong or you shouldn't talk to them like this. Or if you lie to them about this, they're going to think later on it's okay to lie because your lie had good intentions here. Maybe they think their lie later in life has great intentions. Like all of those things... You have to be prepared and um, have as a resource tool in order to raise a child. It takes time, effort, constant consideration, a lot of encouragement, love, discipline, and wisdom. And if you're lacking any of those, maybe you're just not ready. And it is okay to be honest with yourself and say, I'm not ready to have kids. This girl um, tweeted that, I don't know how y'all have children because I'm I'm in such a stage where I've been depressed for a few days. I haven't gotten up to eat and I'm just like, okay, I'll just go to the store on the third day. If I had kids, I would have to get up and feed them and find something to feed them. I, how do y'all do it? And that was an honest question because when people have kids back to back to back, not even a year apart, they don't think about the, the demand that they're going to have at two years old, at four years old, at six years old, at eight years old. It's important for you to really think about what you want your everyday household to look like with children because having multiple children is cool, but it's important to remember, do you wanna go to two schools for pickups? Do you wanna go to the same school for a few years before you have to go to two different schools for pickups? Do you want to have a child that can um, look after the other child while you go to the store or while you go in the car in the driveway or while you do yard work? Do you want a child to be self-efficient at a certain age and they can pour the other one juice or they can make the other one a bowl of cereal? Like you have to think those things out. You can't just keep popping kids out back to back to back and not think about, okay, am I married? Do I have a partner? Um, It takes a village. Do I have people around that be able to watch four babies at the same time? Because a lot of people will say, okay, you need a sitter. Okay, I'll watch them. How many kids is it? It's one kid. Okay, cool, got it. But if you tell them it's four babies at the same age, they're gonna be like, oh no, you're gonna have to pay me a lot more. And you're gonna have to think about that because if it was on the flip end and somebody asked you to babysit and you had four babies around the same age and you talking about you only wanna pay them $40 for two hours, they're gonna laugh at you, okay? So think about your choices and how you wanna have kids and can you actually afford it mentally, emotionally, and physically, not just financially, okay? My name is Shan. This is Cozy Womb Podcast. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you sharing. And don't forget to drop a review on your favorite podcast app. Maybe it's Apple, maybe it's Spotify, maybe it's Google. I don't care. I appreciate it. Peace.